What is your name, please? My name is Mohana. What is your name, please? My name is Mohana. What is your name, please? My name is Mohana. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Mohana and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Kyer. Thank you very much. We're back again with our game of deliberate misrepresentation, wherein our panel tries to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. Now, these three persons all claim to be Mohana. Only one, of course, is the real Mohana. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit while I read it to you? I, Mohana, am living in the United States with my husband, who works for the United Nations. In my native country, India, I am a motion picture actress and have starred in more than 20 feature films. In 1952, I won the Indian equivalent of your American Oscar for the Best Actress of the Year, signed Mohana. <laughs> now, panel, these three people all claim to be Mohana, the Indian movie actress. Of course, as you know, only the real Mohana is required to answer your questions truthfully. You will each question until you hear this signal. And at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real Mohana. And let's start with High Gardner. Hi. But number one, when it's uh, midnight here in New York, daylight time, what time is it in India? Eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, would you want to answer that, number two? I think it would be num uh, 10 o'clock. And number three? About 11.30. Uh, number... <laughs> it's fairly confusing, that uh, number, uh, number one, uh, would you know the name of the UN member who organized the UN police force? No. Uh, number one, who was Carlos P. Romulo? I don't know. Number two, do you know? I think he was the first president, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, number... Polly? Polly Burke. Numbers. <laughs> uh, number one, for what picture did you win the uh, award? Sunstar. Number two, what picture did you Don't win the... Don't be guys than me. I beg your pardon? Don't be guys than me. Oh. Number three, uh, what picture did you win the award? Avara. <laughs> I saw all of them, and you were just one. <laughs> uh... Number three, uh, in motion pictures in India, do you loop dialogue? Do you know what the expression looping is? Or is that just an English expression in pictures? Well, there's an American expression, looping, too. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Oh, looping, I'm sorry. But, uh, number one, what does the jewel in uh, an Indian uh, female's forehead signify? Oh, it's just a cosmetic. Just a decoration? Just a decoration. Ralph Bellamy. Uh, number one, who is the present ambassador, United States ambassador to India? Number two. Mr. Mehta. And who preceded him? I don't remember. Number three. No, I don't know. You can't remember? I don't hear. Um, number one, what is the name of the young lady whom uh, Mr. Rossellini visited in India recently? Sonalini Dasgupta. Uh -huh. um, number two, do the terms, do the names Mitchell and Klieg mean anything to you? No. Number three? No. Number one? No. Kitty Carlisle. Number two, the cosmetic mark on your forehead. How do you keep it on? Well, you can put it on with anything that sticks on. <laughs> and how do you get it off? You pull it off again. You pull it off. Yes. Number three, does a sari have a religious connotation? 
No. It's just a, a national dress. Yes, it's a national dress. Number two, what is the city in, in India that corresponds to our Hollywood, where the film industry has its headquarters? Bombay. Bombay. Yes. Uh, number one, what was your part in your favorite play, in your favorite movie? A bad girl's part. A bad, number two, what was your part? Well, it was a dramatic role, tragedy. A tragedy. And what was the name of the film, your favorite? My favorite was Barsat. That's it, panel. Time is up, and it's time for you to vote. So without consultation, if you will, please, mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Remember, please, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote, which means they may divide as much as $1,000 as they fool the entire panel. And is said panel all ready? How about you, Polly? Not yet? Okay. <laughs> for whom did you vote, Polly? <laughs> I voted for number two. <laughs> oh, is there, you have voted for number two, too, huh? Uh, I actually, uh, number two didn't know what time it was in India, but neither did number one, who I <laughs> thought it was. So number two knew another answer, which I didn't know, but she sounded very sure about it, so I voted for her. <laughs> you see, it, if you keep your thoughts clear, there's no reason why you can't guess it's every a very time. Simple uh, game, Ra right? Ralph, or who? Number two. Number two, uh, you the United States ambassador, and I detected a little uh, British, I think, in there that might have go, gone with, uh, might go with the movie actress. Kitty, how about you? Number two. <laughs> I felt that number two, knowing about uh, Dr. Carlos Romula, probably had more accurate information. Hi, Gardner. Your but vote? He wasn't the first president. Oh, I voted for number one because number one, uh, despite the fact that that was a cosmetic, which it isn't, uh, number one uh, looks like the only person in India that Rossellini missed, but she did know the right time. <laughs> All right, there we have it now. The votes are in, the minds are made up. Now, sink or swim with us. Let's find out which one of these lovely ladies is the Indian movie star. Will the real Mohana please stand up? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Number two. Would you tell us who you really are and what you really do? My name is Manu Rama, and I'm working on promotion of Indian handicraft. I'm also studying business administration. Good. And number three, how about you? My name is Camelia Pereira, and I am a model, and I participated in the Miss Universe contest as Miss Ceylon. Well, if you could swing around and look in front of your desk, you see that the score reads that there were three incorrect votes <laughs> at $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol, ladies. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Good night and good luck. Good <laughs> now, we meet a new set of challenges in just... Now, may we have our next set of challenges, please? What is your name, please? My name is Warren Hare. What is your name, please? My name is Warren Hare. What is your name, please? My name is Warren Hare. All right, panel, will you once again follow along with your copy of this affidavit? I, Warren Hare, a college student, have just returned to this country after five months of hitchhiking through Europe and North Africa with a friend. Recently, our trip hit the front pages of the American newspapers because on the 26th of May, we slipped through the Iron Curtain into Hungary. We were captured by the communists and held prisoner for 13 days. Signed, Warren Hare.
Now, panel, these three people, these three young men, all claim to be Warren Hare, who slipped through the Iron Curtain recently into Hungary. Remember, only the real Warren Hare is required to answer your questions truthfully. And let's start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number three, you say you hitchhiked through, it says here you hitchhiked through uh, <laughs> Europe and North Africa. There's a body of water between Europe and North Africa. How did you hitchhike across that? We didn't. We took a boat. Oh. <laughs> Number two, uh, at what point did you slip into the uh, Iron Curtain, into Hungary? Well, we slipped through on the 26th of June. I mean, at what point, geographically? Geographically, at a town called Sopron. It's about uh, five kilometers from the Hungarian border. Number three, how long did you wander around Hungary before you were caught? Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gardner. <laughs> Number one, when you hitchhike in Europe, what type of car do you generally hail? In the small European cars. Uh, number three, what Hungarian newspaper is printed in English? I don't know, sir. Do you know, number one? No, no. Uh, number two, who was the deposed head of the Hungarian government who shortly will be given a very phony trial? I believe it was Kadar. Beg pardon? Kadar. Uh, number uh, uh, one, we, we, we're all talking now about your slipping through the Iron Curtain with a friend. Number one, uh, what was the name of your friend? Mike Gilbert. And number two, is that correct? Ken Shields. Number three? Jim Walsh. Oh. <laughs> well, they've all got friends. Yeah, but with a mob like that, it's, it's no wonder they got caught. <laughs> what's your name? Uh, I would like... I would like to. I would too. Polly Bergen. Number one, is the uh, eastern sector of Berlin larger than the western sector? I don't know. Uh, number two, could you tell me which sector is the Russian sector of Berlin? The eastern. Uh, which is the largest, number two? The West. I'm sorry. That's all right. Thank you, number three. Would you repeat the question, please? <laughs> uh, number, I, I ask, which is the largest of the two sectors, the East or the West? The West. The Allied sector is the, the largest. The West. Uh, number one, could you tell me, if the Iron Curtain is so well guarded, how did you get through? We simply crawled under the fence. I mean, there were, there were no guards watching at the time? There, there were some, yes. How? Uh, uh, they were? There were. <laughs> There were guards, yes. Oh, but they just didn't see you? No. Uh, how soon after you got through did you get caught? 30 minutes. Oh, you're better than him, <laughs> huh? Thank you. More staying powers, Ralph. Uh, number one, um, what year of college did you leave to make this hitchhiking trip? Sophomore. Sophomore. How'd you get five months? Well, I left in the middle of the year, in, the, in January. Uh -huh. I intend to go back this September. Number two, um, where is Marrakesh? Marrakesh? Yeah. North Africa. Uh, what range of mountains is it? I don't Number know, Number three. Sir. Number one. The Atlas, I think. Mm. Um, number two, um, how were you released from prison and from Hungary? Well, we were taken by the uh, guards from our prison mm. and driven together in a Russian car to the town of Nicholasdorf. Well, by what authority? Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Number two, did you meet any Russians when you were in prison? No. We were Only Hungarians? We met no one. You met no one? We were isolated. What did you have to eat? Mostly dried fruits, dried vegetables, turnips, potatoes. We had rice and a small piece of meat once every week. Number three, did you meet any, anybody in prison at all? No, ma'am. Number one, did you meet anybody? No. You all were just talking to each other? <laughs> Well, that's it. Now, talk to yourselves, but not on the panel. Because without consultation, it's time for you to cast your votes. And select number one, number two, or number three. Ready, panel? Votes all marked. How about you, Polly? For whom did you vote? <clears throat> I voted for number two. He has such a <clears throat> smirk like I made such a mistake. <laughs> I actually, I voted for number two because he, his whole dietary thing on the prison was sensational, and he looked like he ate every bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, for whom did you vote this round? Number one. You're right. I decided. Well, I haven't got a very strong reason, except that he's got a bit of a tan, and it looks as if he might have rested up a bit after he... Uh, Return. <laughs> Kitty, how about your vote? Well, as you can see, I've made a, a, a mess. I voted originally for number three on account of his hair. His name is Mr. Hare. 
But then I decided it better be number two. So I really voted for number two. All right, and how about you, High? What about your well, vote? I disagreed again and voted for number three. Number two said the 26th of June. It says here the 26th of May, so there was some conflict. And furthermore, with the haircut that you're wearing, number three, you look like you got it caught in the iron curtain. <laughs> <laughs> There you are. <laughs> Minds made up and fascinating reasons given. Now let's see which one of the... Oh, you <laughs> certainly are. Which one of these young gentlemen is the real one who slipped through the iron curtain? Will the real Warren Hare please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Andrew Morris, and uh, I'm an assistant buyer for Brooks Brothers. <laughs> uh, number three, how about you, sir? My name is Eddie Hilgemeyer. I'm a waiter at the Coral Room on 18th Street, Manhattan. Well, gentlemen, you'll be happy to know, as you may have gathered, that there were exactly three incorrect votes by our astute panel on this round, too, at $250 each from Geritol for a total of $750. It will come in handy, I trust, to bring you happiness and good luck. Good night and the best of good luck to you. <laughs> now, in just one minute, three new challenges. Now let's have our third team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Elliott. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Elliott. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Elliott. Okay, panel, once again, may I direct your attention to copies of the affidavits in front of you while I read it. I, Beverly Elliott, am the winner of nine beauty contest titles. Now, I am the general manager of a chain of gymnasiums. I also lecture and give demonstrations of strength. I am married to the former national weightlifting champion. In 1953, I myself won the women's weightlifting championship of the state of California. Signed, Beverly Elliott. All right, here we go again, panel. These three people all claim to be Beverly Elliott, champion weightlifter. You will again each question until you hear the signal, and we'll start with Polly Bergen. Polly? Uh, number two, it says here that you've won nine beauty contest titles. Could you name some of them for me, please? Surely. I was Miss Venus of 1955, Miss Air Force Cadet 1955, Miss Naval Orange 1956. I think we'd stop with the Naval <laughs> Orange, if you don't mind. <laughs> I think that's rather interesting. I do, too. Uh, number one, when you and your husband have disputes, how do you settle them? <laughs> <laughs> we talk it out. We don't try to fight it out or anything. Uh, number three, uh, who is the present male uh, weightlifting champion? In what class? <laughs> <laughs> the big one in the Olympics. Uh, Paul Anderson. That's the one I meant. Uh, Ralph? Uh, number one, uh, what's the greatest weight a woman has ever lifted? Well, actually, back in 1912, it was 600 pounds, rather 1,600 pounds. But she had a piano and people on it, so she wasn't in a class. It was just a demonstration. Number two, what would you say the greatest weight? Well, it was Miss Darnell, I believe her name is, and it was 1,600 pounds. She picked up a piano with a man sitting playing it, and she sang to the accompaniment. Mm -hmm. He was holding a candelabra. <laughs> uh, number three, um, what, why did you become a weightlifter? What made you want to become a weightlifter? I actually grew up with it. You I grew up with it? Yes. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, what, is the, um, um, what is, weighs the most of the weight that you lift? Weigh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> you can't state that again. Yeah, what is the weight way that you lift the most? <laughs> well, the most. <laughs> you, you mean what weight does she dig the most? <laughs> <laughs> the most is 150 pounds in the clean and jerk. 
Thank you. And number two, do you feel that it's important to your marriage to have a man who is equally athletic as you are? Well, I think it helps tremendously. You we do? have the same interests, yes. Do you, number three, do you think it would give a man an inferiority complex if he were not as physically strong as his wife? I don't believe so. Hi. Number three, outside of a sore back, what does a weightlifting champ get? <laughs> a girl? Um, what did um, you get? Trophy. Trophy. Were you able to lift them? Uh, where did you, uh, where in California did you win the title? Uh, in Los Angeles, uh, all over actually, mostly Los Angeles. Oh, there was more than one title one? Yes. What's the name of the best newspaper in Los Angeles, do you know? Los Angeles. Time. Uh, number uh, one, uh, what famous weightlifter married a glamour girl, do you know? No. Uh, also number one, who was Al Roon? Who was Al who? Roon, R-O-O-N. I don't know. Do you know Al Roon, well, number two? It may lead you to Roon, but that's the end of this <laughs> questioning period. I'm sorry to say these three lovely ladies all claim to be one person. It's time for you to cast your ballots. Voting, therefore, for number one, number two, or number three. How about it, panel? They're all having trouble this time. I'm ready. Are you? How about mm -hmm. you, Polly? You ready? For whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, actually, I voted for number three because standing up there, she looked like the one who... Your pectoral muscles are sensational. Uh, we're a little late, folks, so good night. Uh, Ralph Bellamy, <laughs> please. Number one. I haven't got much reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have any of us? Seem to have uh, a little Chicken. quicker, uh, readier information. How about you, Kitty? Your vote? Number three. I felt that number three said that when she said, I grew up in it, that's the way you would become a weightlifter. I see. And High Gardner, your vote was for? Well, I voted for one. I went along with Ralph Bellamy, I guess. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I can't see the blonde gal lifting this. <laughs> and I can't see number three lifting number two, so I voted for number one. <laughs> I see. All right, there we have it. The votes are all in and our minds are all made up. Now, let's see which one of these lovely ladies is the champion weightlifter. May I ask each one of you to stand up and come around in front of your desks, please? Thank you. Now, in front of you on the floor of the stage, ladies, you will notice there is a 110-pound barbell. Will the real Beverly Elliott pick up that barbell? <laughs> now. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do? I'm Diane Alexandra, and I'm a press agent. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, how about you? My name is Christy Logan, and I dance at the Latin Quarter in New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, sitting where I am in my vantage point, I see that there were exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Jarrett Hall. Divide it, enjoy it. Thank you for being with us. Good night and good luck. We'll be back in just a... Well, there's just time left to tell you, ladies, that while we're enjoying our little chuckles with the panel here, I will not be with you next week. I'm going away on a little vacation, but I'm very happy to say that my good friend Ralph Bellamy is going to move over from the panel and take my place while I'm away, and I thank you for doing that, Ralph. And Eamon Andrews, the British TV star who has also appeared on this show as one of our challenges one night, not too many weeks ago, is going to take Ralph's place on the panel. So have fun, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you in two weeks. Good night, panel. Good, good night, Bud. And now this is Bud Collier saying good night on behalf of Jared Hall and reminding you to tell the truth.
transportation. Tell the truth is arranged by American Airlines. Guests have flown to New York aboard American famous luxury flights, the DC-7 Mercury. <laughs> to tell the truth is Margaret Bill Cotton production in association with the CBS television network. Miss Bergen and Miss Carlisle's dresses by Molly Parnell.